it feeds right into ACTA's mission to kind of ignite um, values of higher education that always were meant to be, you know, that uh, the reason that higher education exists. And it's very modern and very ancient in the same way. You know, the, the, the Braver Angels mission the Braver Angels mission intersects with that of ACTA in a really beautiful way. It's very nonpartisan. It appeals to everyone from every persuasion in the country. And um, I don't have to do a whole lot of advertising or hard sell around it because there's so much interest in it. I think that it does make people's hearts dance the way it made mine. And uh, it's unfolded in a very, very uh, magnificent way, I have to say. A lot of people ask me to characterize Braver Angels debates in a few words, and I keep coming back to one word in particular, transformative. I really see something taking place with students. It's visceral, it's palpable, and it's electric. You can really feel it. So I say that the Braver Angels debates really touch the core of our humanity. It's a marvelous, mysterious way that it gets about doing that. There's parliamentary procedure, something I didn't know would be so powerful but it really brings out the best in, in students' thinking. They're not talking so much one-to-one, one, one against one, but they're speaking one-to-many. And when you speak one-to-many, it becomes less about you and personalities and more about us and how we can kind of rise up in understanding and maybe solve some problems together. Look, we're doing all this work around the Brave Angels program. It's growing and growing and growing. There's more demand for it than ever before. We have a team and we're working seven days a week on it. And what gives me hope about all this is actually when I sit down to either chair a debate, whip in a debate, or participate in a debate, and I watch what happens with the students. It ignites their critical thinking. It ignites their passion. It ignites their courageous thought and speech. Um, there's a whole joy, uh, level of joy that I feel just watching that next layer of students after the opening speakers have started the debate, and those are the ones who are comfortable in their own skin, and they love to sp speak in public, and they, they give really well thought out speeches, but when they sit down, that's when the debate really starts. And that next layer of students who are more, much more shy, gun shy and, and reticent, not so comfortable speaking in public, feel moved to do so and share their reality, their truth, about any given topic. And we're, we're touching on some of the toughest topics dividing America today, from immigration to abortion, you name it. And what gives me hope is seeing how the students just come alive and um, joyfully share their truth and also listen to each other and grow from the experience. And I can see the smiles on professors' faces when they see their students doing this. But once in a while, something comes that's a game changer that really, again, reaffirms my whole belief in this program and gives me hope again. A good example of that is the freshman debate or the freshman orientation debate experience that we had at Denison University. Now this was an initiative that was really engendered by the college president, Adam Weinberg. He spoke to the college professor that we had been working with on a couple of Braver Angels debates, that's Adam Davis, and said, can't we bring Braver Angels to our campus in a larger way? And what about introducing it to the entire freshman class, the first days that they're on campus? So when they spelled that out, that when they spelled that idea out to me, I immediately raced back to our team and was just really excited and we started talking about it like our minds were blown immediately about this. Well, we did it. We brought three debates to campus on, um, at the end of August, beginning of their freshman semester in um, 2022, fall semester. We ran three simultaneous Braver Angels debates for 680 students in three auditoriums, all on the same topic, all on, on the same resolution around free speech on campus. Now, my personal fear about this was that we were going to open these debates with great student leaders from Denison, established, confident, juniors and seniors, and a couple of faculty members thrown in for good measure. 
and they're going to kick off the debate. What was going to happen when the hundreds of freshmen watching this uh, were asked to speak? What was going to happen after the speakers finished? Were the freshmen going to just sit there and just, you know, like mum and, and, you know, uh, stupefied, or were they going to come to life? Well, what happened was the freshmen were like a fire hose. One after another, they got up and made wonderful speeches, asked incredible questions. The energy was electric. I was racing all up and down the aisles of the auditorium, handing the microphone to student after student. And it was just mesmerizing what took place. And that happened in all of the auditoriums with this debate. So the freshmen came alive. And you got to understand, this is freshmen coming to campus for the first time, launching their entire college career. And they're being um, given a, a major signal that Denison, this university campus, honors free expression, believes in the First Amendment, um, wants students to voice opinions to each other, listen to each other, debate, discuss. And that's why we came, and that's why we were at what we were asked to do. Now, a couple weeks later, I started getting emails from people at Denison saying, professors are telling us that hey, my students, my freshman students are standing up in class sharing their opinions. They're talking to each other. They're engaging with each other more. And that's going against the research that we have from groups like FIRE and others right now that are telling us that students are self-censoring. They're afraid to share their opinions in class, campus, lecture hall, whatever. And we're seeing that as an effect of the Braver Angels debates that we, maybe we didn't anticipate um, in full the way we're starting to encounter it now. To build a, cult a culture of free expression is a worthy goal. I mean, and to help higher education fulfill its promise of preparing students for citizenship that's engaged to be, you know, really um, fulfill the American experiment and um, to make democracy what it really can be, I think higher education is absolutely indispensable for that. And it's really taking a beating lately in the last decade in all kinds of ways. There's, you know, it used to be in the 60s and 70s when I was a kid that the liberals were um, the ones that were getting suppressed in their free speech. And now it's the liberals who are suppressing the conservatives. The pendulum keeps swinging. But I think there's something magical about um, the debate experience. As I, as I say, it's transformative. It just ignites courage in students and originality and um, deep listening and respect for each other. And when they stand on those values, they start to live them in college, in the classroom, on campus. But they take that to their careers. They take that to their families. They take that into society. And the joy for me as being the older person on the team is that I see all these young people who are tomorrow's leaders definitely um, preparing to really lead and take the country to a better place. Mm -hmm.